at the time, Bad Boy didn't exist. That's right. He was trying to, he was putting it together. Mm -hmm. So we did this record that um, Dallas Austin had wrote called Never Fall in Love Again. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful record. And um, recorded it. And I guess he was with Puff at the time. Mm. Played it. Puff was like, yo, they sound like this? Like in person? Like yeah, live? Yeah. So he was like, there's only one way to find out, right? Yeah. So being that we were, I say, tell it, tell it, tell it show, like, kind of yeah, raised yeah, bread. Professional, you know what right? professional. So, you know, like, we were kids, we were like, yeah, so, you know, you have to sound good all the time, every time, let's go, you That's know right. what I mean? So, um, um, drove us up there to the, actually, the parking lot of 112, and, um, uh, man, of we, the club. We, of the club. Yeah. Now we were nowhere close to being old enough to go inside. Sure, sure, sure. But uh, we were still in high school. Yeah. But um, went up there, sang everything we knew. Probably every commission song, every boys to men. Um, yeah. <laughs> take six. And I remember how Puff. He said, "I think at this point, if y'all sing ABCs, you it's gonna sound, sound good. good. Absolutely. So yeah." So y'all, y'all, y'all could sing the phone book. It don't even matter. Oh man, it didn't matter. I mean, if it had chords and you know what I'm saying, yeah. like we would put it together. Like let's go. That's one thing about you guys that I always found special. I mean, obviously, again, there's so many dynamic groups, but you guys had again some of the formula of the guys that I loved, like yeah. Commission, like Take Six, Boys and Men. Mm-hmm. Um, but you also had this this other little thing. I, I, I don't right. even know how to define it, yeah. but you had another thing yeah. that. That we as R and B fans loved, you know, what yeah. I'm saying you guys were young, you guys were fresh. Right. It didn't feel as it didn't feel it was polished and buttoned up, but it didn't feel as um, I guess structured at first as boys to men. Exactly. Yeah. So you know that I think that had a lot to do with how we were raised. Mm-hmm. So like I said, you know, uh, we're from the same neighborhood as Young Thug, mm-hmm. and my, and a, a lot of you know a lot of hip hop artists. Yeah, yeah. And if you know that, you, you know, we have a sense of having a raw like a raw talent to us, Mm -hmm. you know, and it just has to be honed. So we were trying to figure out who was, who, who is one to like, who's one twelve, and how we can be the best one twelve we can be. Right. Right. So being that we were blessed to be able to, uh, you know, sign in with bad boy Mm -hmm. and then puff introducing us to like East coast sounds, Mm -hmm. sounds beats, you Mm -hmm. know? So, you know, um, Everybody has some form of structure, like yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like you go to the West Coast, you'd have a funk right, sound, right? That's right? East Coast had like this real edge, street mm-hmm. East Coast edge, mm-hmm. you know. Even in the South, it's even it's very soulful, sure. And you know what I'm saying. And then the beats are very melodic. You know what I'm saying. We knew that when yep. Silk came out. That's right. You know what I'm saying. You can literally hear it. You know that's, what I'm saying. That's a fact. They mastered in their ballads. That's you right. You know what I'm saying. So uh, we were trying to figure out who we were, and Puff basically start playing us beats. Like, you know, 80s beats mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. you we go to the hit factory at first, mm-hmm. and then he then created Daddy's House, where producers would go inside of there, and they would just bang out. They're playing samples, running yeah. wild, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I would be the student of this, just listening, just listening to the sounds and just like, Wow. Okay, so how can we take these soulful, relatable words and put it to these type of beats? Mm-hmm. And then you have to have an edge too. So, like That's us right. being from the hood, you know, we're not gonna come off like this. That's right. Because we're not that. That's yes, right. We're what's up. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the so the words and the language it had to be a certain kind of a way, even though there was just the certain polished things that we loved about, even with secular groups like A Boy's to Man or mm-hmm. New Edition. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So it's just like, so put those all together, here we go. Gotcha. That's 112. You know. uh, other ones were big with hip-hop. Right. Bad Boy had hip-hop and R&B. Yes. I mean, 112, Total, Faith Evans, Carl Thomas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean, like, really making really, really classic, incredible R&B music. Yeah. Like, Talk a little bit more about the influence that Puff had on not just on you guys, but just yeah. the, his his whole vision for R and B at that time. Uh, oh yeah, so the best thing, the best thing, you know, first of all, first of all, anybody knows Puff, he's a visionary, mm-hmm. so he kind of already sees you who you are before you're already there. Mm-hmm. He's, he's trying to make sure that you're getting there. Now, 
the best move that he did, what makes him more of a genius is the fact that he allowed us to be ourselves. Mm. So he didn't bother us. Mm. When we were doing the music and stuff like that, he would come in in splashes and see, make sure that we were still oh, like part. doing what we were doing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for the most part, he saw that, you know, he knew who we were signing. Yeah. He knew that the artist that he had, you didn't have to babysit him. We were writing and producing our own records. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. it was, and then the bigger fact of us being who we are, and then it was a big family. Mm-hmm. So we were always around faith mm-hmm. all the time. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And big, you know, mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. we were always around them. Yeah. And, and musically, faith, while she was doing her album, we were there. Right. So we would pick up a lot of stuff off of what she was doing. She would be like, hey, I need y'all to come in here. Help me write this part. Mm. She didn't really need our help. Of course. But you know what I'm saying? But, but she, add, would, but she add, was add, doing that flavor. It, and it was adding the situations. And that, that, that's what made 112 unique. While we were trying to hone in our skills, we were writing for other artists. So we get a chance to write for like New Edition or Pink. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Isley Brothers. You know, you, you're, we're literally saying, okay, we know who we are. Now let's sprinkle our sound and what our fingerprints, you of know, course. what we want music to feel like. Can we talk? Oh, can we talk? Can we talk?